Welcome to the Masterclass on Pydantic AI, a new framework for building AI agents. You may be familiar with Pydantic, the typing and validation library for Python that is widely used for structuring input and output from LLMs. Pydantic AI is a new framework from the same team specifically designed for building agents, and that's what we'll be covering in this series. In this masterclass, you're going to learn about the core features of Pydantic AI by building agents. We're going to hit all key features of the framework with plenty of examples. So by the end of this, you'll have the confidence and knowledge to build your own agents. In this masterclass, we're going to code a lot of examples, covering all critical aspects of the framework. We'll start simple by building our first agents in just five lines of code. Next, we'll explore how to use different models, both commercial and also local open models, such as Llama 3.2, to build more capable agent systems. Gradually, we'll increase the complexity and capabilities of our agents by adding more features. Along the way, we'll explore what makes Pydantic AI unique among agent frameworks. Speaking of unique, here are some of the features that make Pydantic AI an attractive choice for building agent systems. It's built by the same team behind Pydantic. It supports OpenAI, Anthropic, Gemini, and many more models. It seamlessly integrates with Pydantic Logfire for real-time debugging, performance monitoring, and tracking. It is type safe. It's designed to make type checking as easy as possible. It is Python-centric. It leverages Python for most operation. It uses the power of Pydantic to validate and structure model outputs. It has a unique dependency injection system and many more. We'll hit some of these unique features later in the presentation. Today, We'll take a high-level look at how Pydantic AI works and how to create basic agents using OpenAI, Olama, and Azure OpenAI models. But before we start, let's define what Pydantic AI is. It's a new AI agent framework from the same team that brought us Pydantic. It supports many of the features of modern agent frameworks, and it aims to simplify the agent creation process. At the center of the flow is the agent. As a Python object, it makes calls to an LLM. Tools may be provided to enhance the context, as well as static and dynamic system prompts. Finally, runtime dependencies can help add dynamic context, such as customer IDs or current weather conditions. Pydantic AI uses plain Python to control the flow of agent data. There is no need for domain-specific code or extra classes. You can get more information Read the wonderful documentation and explore the examples at ai.pydantic.dev. The framework leverages Python's control flow and agent composition to build any AI-driven project, making it easy to apply standard Python best practices you'd use for any AI or non-AI project. It is designed to make type checking as useful as possible, so it integrates well with static type checkers like MyPy and PyWrite. It supports OpenAI, Anthropic, Gemini, Olama, Grok, and Mistral, and there is a simple interface to implement support for other models. You can create multiple agents where each agent can operate with its own model, exchanging information through message history and a dynamic runtime context. You can also harness the power of Pydantic to validate and structure model outputs, ensuring responses are consistent across runs. It provides the ability to stream LLM outputs continuously with immediate validation, ensuring rapid and accurate results. It offers a dependency injection system unique among frameworks to provide data and services to your agent's system prompts, tools, and results validators. This is useful for testing and eval-driven iterative development. You can inject critical context data such as customer info, or the results of offline calculations during runtime through dynamic runtime context. It supports tools, reflection, and self-correction. Okay, it is now time to jump into our coding editor. Today, we'll cover five examples of simple agents with Pydantic AI. Let's start with the Hello World. You'll see how easy it is to build our first agent by covering just five lines of code. Okay, here, we're going to start by importing our agent class from Pydantic AI. 
Then we're going to also import OpenAI model from Pydantic AI models OpenAI. For our model today, we're going to rely on GPT-4 All Mini because it's fast and inexpensive. And the, the way to define the agent is as simple as passing the model to the agent class. Finally, we're going to run the run underscore sync method, which is a synchronous method to just run agent with LLM. And the simple question today is what is the capital of the United States? It should be a simple hello world. This is the total of the entire application, five lines of code, including the import statements. So let's run this real quick and see how it executes. We're going to open the integrated terminal in Visual Studio Code and run this by typing python one hell world .py. And here, the first thing you may notice is a warning from Logfire that a Logfire ignore no config flag must be set or an environment variable must be set. Don't worry about this for now. Ignore this warning. Uh, we'll fix Logfire in the next video for now. It's harmless, um, just ignore it and uh, keep an eye on the result of the run. Answer that came back is the capital of the United States is Washington DC, which is the expected answer. And for this simple example, we hit the OpenAI GPT-40 mini model. One thing you may notice in this example is that we're not passing the OpenAI key here. And the trick here is because I have set it in my environment variable is OpenAI, API key, it is present as an environment variable, and that's how Pydentic AI is able to find the key and able to make the call to OpenAI. In future examples, uh, we'll change that. In fact, uh, when we start using OpenAI examples, uh, we're gonna pass that as a uh, environment variable from the .env file, because that will give us more granular control, especially if you have multiple models from OpenAI and each one comes with its own key, then you'll need to pass them separately to the models uh, by passing these keys and, and one environment variable will not cut it in that situation. Okay, so we're done with this very first hello world example. There you go, folks. In five lines of code, you have your first agent built in Pydentic AI. Let's move on to our next example, which we will use in OpenAI model with the uh, environment variable that I mentioned we're gonna get from .env. And for this, we're going to start by importing our classes. Again, we'll use agent from Pydentic AI and OpenAI model from Pydentic AI models.openai. And for this, we're also going to use .env and load.env. And in this case, we're going to create an instance of the model by OpenAI model GPT-4 off, and we'll pass the API key just because in future iterations, you may need multiple models, you may have multiple models and they may all have their own keys. Okay, so we create an instance of our agent and we run it with result is equal to agent run sync. Run sync is one of the methods available to the agent class. It's easy, that's why we chose to use that. And in this case, we're asking for the capital of Mexico. It's a simple test again, just to test to make sure that our OpenAI model works and we're just going to print the result.data. Uh, we're going to open the integrated terminal in Visual Studio Code and run python 2.1 agent openai.py and we're going to get the same warning one more time. We're going to ignore it and here's the answer. The capital of Mexico is Mexico City as expected and this is the result of our run with OpenAI's GPT-40 model. Again, a very simple it's not five lines, but it's definitely no more than 15 lines of code. We have an open AI agent system with a single agent providing a basic agentic flow. So we're going to now move on to the, our next model. The purpose of this first hello world examples is to try and hit multiple models. So depending on your situation, you may choose to go with an open AI model. You may choose to go with an Olama open source model running locally on your machine. Or as we'll see in the last example, maybe uh, you have a Azure as a provider, so you may want to pick something from Azure. So this next example is a Olama model. And for that, we're going to import from Pedantic uh, AI models dot Olama, we're going to import the Olama model. And the way to create an instance is by passing the model name in the base URL. In the base URL, 
uh, make sure that you have the Llama server running on your local host. The port number typically is 11.434 slash v1, but verify that before you run it. And just make sure that you have the model downloaded beforehand. I'll show you how to do it now. Once the code is ready and we pass the model as the Llama model to the agent, let's open a integrated terminal and just verify that we have this model listed. And we do that by running Llama space list. And that's going to give us a list of all the models installed in our local computer. As you can see, I have a host of models, including Llama 3.21b. That's one of the smallest and fastest models. I love using this model for testing purposes, and we're going to use that uh, throughout this tutorial. OK, so we have it ready and our server is running. So now we can actually run our script. So we do that by Python 2.2 agent olama.py. We get the log fire warning. We ignore that. And now Olama is running. And sure enough, the capital of the United States is Washington, D.C. It comes back with the answer. You may also see that we're using Colorama and we're using for that red here to display this message in red fonts. OK, that's really good. Let's move on to the next example. We're going to use the Azure OpenAI model. And there is an important trick here because this applies to any OpenAI compatible model that can be passed as a client. So as you can see here, we will create a client that is the async Azure OpenAI from the OpenAI library. And we're going to pass three environment variables here. And these environment variables are the endpoint, the API version, and the API key. And then when creating the model, we'll pass this OpenAI client as our client variable. So this is really important. Any OpenAI compatible client, you can create it with the OpenAI client and pass it to the Pydentic AI class with the OpenAI underscore client parameter. And that should take care of it. And here, we're just going to create the agent by passing the model. Uh, we're going to use 4.red to denote the answer. And we're going to ask the same question, what's the capital of the United States? Open the integrated terminal, run the Python script, and ignore the warning. And sure enough, you should get the same answer, Washington, DC, from now coming from OpenAI and Azure. And for this model, I am also using GPT-4.0. OK, that's really good. So we have a couple of models running. In this last example, I'd like to run multimodal agents to show you how you can execute each agent with a different model and have them communicate with each other. So that's really cool because you may have a number of agents. So far, we only had one. But in this example, I'm going to use two agents. The first agent will make a call to OpenAI and get some results, and we'll pass those messages to the second agent, which will make a call to Olama and use that message history to get the answer. So you can mix and match agents and models depending on your needs, both from a performance, specificity, as well as cost perspective. So uh, we're going to import our classes, both Olama model as well as OpenAI model. And here, we're going to create our models with specific names, uh, OpenAI model for the OpenAI, then we're going to call it OpenAI agent. And then we're going to execute the OpenAI agent with the question, what is the capital of Mexico? And obviously the answer is Mexico City. And we're going to print that and we're going to preface that with the OpenAI agent and the result that data. We're going to capture the last message from the result that messages. And there are several methods here that can help us. But what we're going to use here is the one that is result dot new underscore messages, which only captures the last message. So we'd like the message from the AI and pass that message onto our next call. And we're going to create the Llama model. And Llama model will use 3.2, 1 billion. Base URL is my local host. And we're going to create an agent passing the Llama model. And here, very importantly, we're going to preface it with olama.agent and run olamaagent.runsync. And the question here will be, tell me about the history of this city. And this city will be passed as a context in message history. Message history will be the last message from the previous agent run. So it should be Mexico City. And in theory, the Olama agent should tell us the history 
of Mexico City. So let's continue to run this. Open the integrated terminal and type Python 2.4 multi-agent agents.py. And the first thing we'll see is the OpenAI agent will return the capital of Mexico is Mexico City. And now this will be passed to the Olama agent and boom, the Olama agent in green letters will tell us about the history of Mexico City. So in effect, we've tied two different agents working from two separate models and sharing the same message history, which is super cool. Okay, so this is again amazing. So in very short period of time, in less than 10 minutes, we covered five different ways of how to create agents with different models. Let's move on and summarize. Okay, so Pydentic AI is a new agent framework designed to build production ready systems by supporting key features such as type checking, dependency injection. It supports them out of the box because it's built by the same team and has the same foundations as the Pydentic framework, which is a wonderful framework for type checking and validation. We looked at several examples today of models that can be used with Pydentic AI and demonstrated multi-agent flows using different models. Now, in the next video, we'll cover how to configure Logfire and learn about tracing and debugging our agent flows. Okay, folks, we've come to the end of this first tutorial in the series. If you've stayed this far, pat yourself on the back and get a cold one as a reward. I hope this was a good investment of your time and you learned something new. If you like this kind of content, please consider subscribing and giving this video a thumbs up. Thank you and see you in the next one.